Hello, hello everyone. I hope that you're all having a beautiful day. I'm excited today because last night we were able to take down the Pokeballers One Piece Store Championship with my Katakuri favorite character in One Piece deck. Shout out to Dylan from Locals for being the original builder of this list and coming up with all of the ratios. I tried a lot of different ratios and this is the one that ultimately I found to be the most successful personally. But not only that, across three different players in three different store championships, this exact list has come out on top. So I think that you should give it a try if you haven't already, or at least be prepared to face it. Starting off with first in the deck, we've got four of the one cost pudding searchers. Searchers are really important in any color. If you have a searcher, in my opinion, you should probably max out how many copies you're playing of it in the deck. So we are playing four of the one cost pudding. Primarily when I play this card, I wanna use it to grab a 10 cost big mom if I don't already have one or two in my hand. Otherwise, I'm grabbing things like 2k counters if I need to defend, or a Pero Sparrow if I don't have a good follow-up play the next turn. Then we've got four copies of the Brulee. This card is super important because of its trigger. Being able to play this card for free off of life is super backbreaking, and if you can use your leader ability from Katakuri to move this card from your life to the bottom so you can trigger it later on in the game as your opponent is trying to finish you off, that can be devastating and win games outright. Then we've got another four copies of a card, a big mom card that can be played off of life from its trigger. So it's gonna be a recurring theme in the deck and one of its biggest strengths overall. We've got four copies of Perospero, the eldest son of the big mom family. Then moving on to another son of the big mom family, we've got four Charlotte Crackers. This card, if triggered early in a matchup against Zoro, can be really, really powerful using the double attack to put some tempo pressure back against your opponent. Really, really useful in that matchup and all around just a really solid card. Rounding out the triggers that can be played off of life as offensive attackers, we've got Charlotte Smoothie. Of the group, I think Charlotte Smoothie is probably the least effective, but still, the ability to be able to play this card off of life after your opponent has already committed resources into attacking you is incredibly strong, and it's why I play four copies of this card in my deck. Now, moving on to what some might call the tech choice of the deck, we've got four copies of Baron Tamago. This card is really useful against our, some of our worst matchups in the meta, Whitebeard and Zoro. Against Whitebeard, most of your other Big Mom attackers that we saw there had 5k base attack, so they require another Dawn after you've played them, invested into them, and to be able to swing in to Whitebeard. There's a lot of times where you're not going to be able to do that because a lot of the best plays late game for yellow involve tapping out your Dawn completely for stuff like the 10 cost Big Mom or even the 7 cost Big Mom if you're going first. So having a Baron Tamago is really good to put pressure back onto, onto Whitebeard. And against Zoro, where they're playing so many searchers and every almost every card they play replaces it in its hand, every single 1,000 counter power that you can burn from them matters. So the efficiency of the Baron Tamago, I think, is really good. Now, some might be saying, why aren't you playing four of the Charlotte Katakuri with Rush? But that card doesn't have any combo power, and you do need to be able to def defend from a lot of attacks, especially if you're playing against a Zoro player. After the Baron Tamago, we've got two copies of Shirahoshi. This is a card that I was playing four of in my deck, and then I dropped it down to three, and now I'm at two. Every time I cut it, I was adding the next card that we'll be talking about, and I think that the trigger ability is incredibly powerful and can really help you search for the things that you need or even just add more counter power to your hand and get rid of some of the other bricky cards that are in Katakuri. However, you need those strong late game plays consistently and Shirahoshi, if you draw it late game, can just be a 1K counter in your hand and is not something that's gonna help you climb out of the game that you're losing. So how do you climb out of the games that you're losing or deal with the games where you have to end up going first? 
This card here, the seven cost Charlotte Linlin from the starter deck was MVP of the tournament. And I'm honestly thinking of bumping this up to four copies because it really helps you not just stay alive to be able to play the 10 cost big bombs, but if you do end up going first, you need something powerful that you can play on your seven dawn and something again that you can play on your nine dawn turns. And I think the Charlotte Linlin fills that gap really, really well. It also forces your opponent to make the mental choice of either trashing a card or adding one card from the top to the deck to your own life, which can help you get more triggers off. But even just making your opponent make that mental choice, sometimes that can be really important in a tournament when they've already made so many other choices. It can be that one extra kind of mental thing that breaks the bridge for your opponent. And you can have them second guessing it the turn after they make their decision. Now, following up the seven cost Big Mom, we've got the eight cost Katakuri Secret Rare. This card, I actually did not end up playing in the tournament. However, I still do think it is an effective card. I think if I were to add one more copy of the seven cost Big Mom starter, I'd probably drop one of these Katakuri Secret Rares, but I do like it for building board pressure. It's got some fun combos where you can use it to send your own Shirahoshi back to the top of your life. But most importantly, it can be really good for dealing with your opponent's really high-end boss monsters that they might be trying to play against you. And now for the best card in the deck, we are playing four copies of the Charlotte Lin Lin 10 cost. This card, when you play it, you get to trash one of your opponent's life and then add one life to your own. It's incredibly powerful, if not the most powerful 10 cost card in the game right now. I think if you can play two of these back to back against your opponent, on curve going second it's extremely powerful and I, I don't know how you can play play around that to be honest that can just win games outright and i think some of the most mentally intensive turns in tournaments are the turns when you have 10 dawn so just being able to turn all 10 of those dawn sideways and play one card i think is also very helpful in a tournament for mental stamina, which does matter in stuff like store championships or even regionals where you're playing a lot of rounds. Now, defensively in the deck, we've got four copies each of Struson Gaming. Personally, I'd love to see a winner card version of this Struson. Four copies of the Sanji 2K, and then four copies of the Pudding 2K. Remember, if you're using the Pudding Searcher, you can't grab this Pudding because it does also count as a Pudding. But nice to have 12 2K counters in the deck. I think that is really important. And then as far as events... We're running one copy of Ikaku Sovereignty. This card on paper is really strong for two Dawn, 5,000 counter power, but I found that most games I was only playing this card one time, and there's a lot of times where even in games I just wish it was a 1,000 counter power to be able to defend from attack because there are so many turns where we are tapping out our Dawn completely. And then the final card in the deck is Thunderbolt. This card is pretty much our only way for dealing with blockers and unfortunately it does come with a big downside of having to discard trash one of the own cards of the top of our life so usually I'm only playing this card if I'm swinging on my opponent for game if they think they're safe they play their blocker especially stuff like Marco I can use Thunderbolt to remove it and then swing for game this is a card that I was originally playing two copies of, but I just found it was a little bricky and the trigger wasn't something that I could rely on because there's a lot of times where even if you get that trigger early game, you might not want to use it because you might need to save it late game to hard cast against something like a Marco blocker if you're facing off against a Whitebeard or Zoro. Strengths of the deck, I think the biggest strength is the Charlotte Linlin. This card being able to play back to back is just absolutely, well, back breaking and can win games outright. 
But if the deck was just the 10 cost Big Mom, I think it would be good, but not great. I think what makes the deck great is the fact that we're running 20 triggers in the deck, 20 out of 50 cards in the deck are trigger, and 16 of those are cards that you can play for free off of the trigger just by discarding a card from your hand. So that is incredibly, incredibly powerful, and it's something that your opponent a lot of times just can't play around or against, and that's why I like to call the deck the yellow slot machine, because they've already committed their resources, and then you can activate a trigger that can change the board state, and that is super, super powerful, especially in some of those 10 dawn turns in the One Piece card game. The final strength of the deck, I think, is the versatility of the leader's ability. When you attach one dawn on the Katakuri and swing, you not only get an additional 1,000 counter power for free, but you also get to look at the top of your life, which you can use defensively. I like to move stuff like brulee triggers to the bottom so that I can activate them, hopefully on one of the last turns of the game. Or if I'm playing someone like Zoro, I like to have stuff like the Charlotte Cracker up at the top of my life so that I can trigger those early to put pressure on against my opponent. Defensively, I also like to use the card against my opponent, and if I see that they have a blocker at the top of their life, I'll often move those cards to the bottom of their life, so hopefully when they do end up drawing it, it's as I'm swinging for game and they won't be able to play the blocker to be able to eat one of the big mom swings. So that brings me into keys to beating the deck. I think first and foremost, blockers, blockers, blockers. One cost blockers trade really well into the high cost big boss monsters like the Big Mom in Katakuri. And decks like Trafalgar Law, I think, is one of our worst matchups because they can spam so many blockers and yellow doesn't have a lot of options outside of Thunderbolt, which has its own downsides for dealing with those blockers. Additionally, say your deck doesn't have a, a lot of blockers or even on top of the blocker strategy, I think you need to be able to put the Katakuri decks in a position where if they tap out all 10 Dawn to play the Charlotte Linlin, -Lin, they lose. So you need to put them in a position early on by going wide with a lot of attackers. I think that really helps because yellow is good at defending big, tall attacks, but it struggles from defending from a lot of attacks because you're using these triggers to trash cards from your hand. So when the card is being added to your life, you're not getting that counter power. It's going straight to the board. But on top of that, you have to ditch another card from your hand as well. So you can help reduce the hand size of the yellow and then try and swing big with a lot of attacks to finish them off. That would be my recommendations for dealing with yellow. If you enjoyed the video, I greatly appreciate it. If you could smash that like button, comment down below if you try the deck out and how it works for you, if you have any suggestions, and if you haven't already, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the Manatee Nation. But most importantly, I hope that you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace out, everyone. Let's go! Also, shout out to Kaizuku Cards. We do have the Alt Art Katakuri Dawn set, which you can pick this up from kaizukucards.com. We've also got the Alternate Art Kaizuku Cards Custom Wave Foil Donut Boy. Also, cards like these can be found on kaizukucards.com. Incredible craftsmanship, as always. Love to be able to rock the double-sided Alt Art Leader. We've even, for good luck, Got my little Katakuri figure here as well. I picked this up on eBay. There's some like blind gotcha boxes with different cat and dog versions of One Piece characters that I really enjoy collecting. So happy that I could add the Katakuri there to the collection.